Good afternoon. We are here today with Cesar Cruz, and we're going to do a quick fundamental review, mostly focusing on South America. I think we'll let Cesar uh, focus where he thinks uh, we need to focus on before the uh, January 12th report. With that, Cesar, thanks for coming on with us. Uh, thanks for having me here, Connor. Be nice to talk to you guys before the WASD tomorrow uh, and after the CONHAB yesterday, actually. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's see the numbers. They're probably going to change in uh, 24 hours, but l let's jump right into it, see what we can expect. Yep. Just... Go. Oh, great. Thank you. So yep. here we have the trade estimates for um, the WASD tomorrow. First, we have on the first table here, we have a core and soybean production for the U.S., uh, we're not expecting a lot of changes here. Like um, the trade estimate is kind of decent. Um, of course, you already know that in, you can expect a higher production uh, uh, than 22, kind of similar numbers that we had in December for uh, the, the next crop year for both beans and corn. We also have the grain stocks estimate for December 1st. You're gonna see that uh, Trade range is also decent. You're going to have increasing stocks uh, for December 1st stocks for, for corn, a little bit cut for, for, for beans, a little bit higher uh, um, you know, stocks for, for, for wheat. Uh, we don't have a trade estimate for sorghum, though. So we can go ahead. So yeah, that's so, great. Because uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say overall theme, the trade, we're not expecting a whole. The, the range feels pretty tight to me on mm -hmm. uh production it doesn't mean that you know we're gonna have a uh, low volatility and no surprises but the trade isn't expecting some big moves is that, is that what i'm seeing here that's correct they're not expecting big moves here in the west because i think the tension yep. is turned to south america right now because they're producing and actually harvesting uh right. currently the, the beans so we can go ahead and see what uh, we can expect for, for South America. It's just a little bit of geography lesson here, showing you a map uh, from South America. The main countries, like I could actually just have three maybe here, Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. The numbers in parentheses here, I think they, now for, for the purpose of this slide here, they matter because they show you the rank in production and exports for each country. So you're gonna see a lot of ones, a lot of twos, threes here especially for, for Brazil, if you go to the table for, for Brazil, Brazil is the largest producer of, of corn and, and uh, third, actually, sorry, producer of corn and became the first, uh, uh, the largest exporter of corn last year. And we still, we still expect in Brazil to be the largest exporter. For beans, Brazil is the largest exporter and uh, producer uh, of beans. If you go to Argentina, which is also a big uh, producer and exporter, uh, they produce a lot of corn, uh, and also export a, lot, a decent amount of corn. Uh, for beans, they produce a lot of beans, but they actually use a lot of their beans because they're first exporters of oil and meal. Uh, and they're probably going to go back to the market very strongly uh, after they harvest their crop. Everything suggests that Argentina won't have a problem uh, with their production last, uh, this year after having several issues with uh, the weather in the past years. If you compare the table on top there, Connor, uh, with our production here in the U.S., you're going to see that corn production in South America compared to what we produce here in the U.S. is not that great. Nearly half of what we produce, but they export a lot. The com combined exports of uh, South America is nearly double of what we export here in the U.S. But for beans, they produce and export a lot of beans to the world. Yeah. So when I look at that, South America production, they're exporting roughly half of what they produce. United States on, on corn, I should say, looks like we're exporting around, I don't know, what do you want to call it? 12, 15% of what mm -hmm. we produce. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, for beans, you check Brazil's uh, production and exports. Brazil produces like, exports like two thirds maybe of what they export. So it's a lot of uh, exports from, from Brazil. Right, gotcha deal okay keep going forward here just like combined oops i think i just moved forward right. <laughs> uh go back to one slide here let me use this okay oh, i think we are moving together <laughs> here you go you looking for this one yes yes thank you yeah. so there's an interesting these are two interesting tables here the one on the top uh is the trade estimates for uh tomorrow's wasdi for south america 
So they are expecting Brazil to have a reduction uh, in both corn and beans production. Uh, for Argentina, we're going to have something kind of more stable, not big changes expected uh, in Argentina. But the lower table here, actually, they highlighted uh, uh, cells here. They show you, especially the third column, the trade range for yesterday's uh, CONABS estimate. You're going to see, that especially for corn, the lower end of the trade estimate was much lower than the trade estimate for the WASDE tomorrow. So 114 was the lower end of the trade estimate for corn production in Brazil, and 122, the lower end for tomorrow's WASDE. It's hard to say why they're so different. But I can, in, there is an indication here that the production in Brazil can be even lower. That's what Brazilian analysts are probably uh, estimating right now. One thing that is important here that Conabi yesterday decreased Brazil exports is a different uh, uh, market year here than we have for the WASDI, but they decreased their uh, estimate for exports by 3 million metric tons uh, for Brazil for corn. Um, so this is kind of interesting to compare how different those uh, trade estimates uh, currently are. And uh, I just put those numbers, I used those numbers in local estimate, uh, the, the local estimates for uh, the 23-24 20, uh, crop year. You're gonna see on the top corn production, soybean production. And here I'm using local estimates for Brazil, the CONAB uh, estimates and the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange for Argentina or the Rosario Grain Exchange in Argentina. In your show this morning, you compared those numbers. And you're going to see that uh, even if you take, like it doesn't matter if you take like the trade or the local estimates, there'll be a lot of corn and beans production still. Meaning that um, I'm going to talk more about corn, but beans in Brazil are currently being harvested. This started uh, last week. And uh, we are going to expect Brazil to produce a lot of beans. Corn, there is still a lot of uncertainty regarding corn because Brazil, as I showed, told you before, like a, they're going to produce uh, another crop that is exportable crop. Uh, they're going to start planting late this month, early uh, next month. But difference, the difference here is, uh, is important, but combined Brazil and Argentina are going to be important players uh, in the market in 23, 24. This is also very interesting to show. For some reason, I lost and missed the, the, the dates on the horizontal axis here, but those are uh, year, dif yearly differences for uh, between the estimates for CONAB and the USDA. So you can see that over the three last three years, including the current year, the difference between the USDA, the USDA estimates and the CONAB's uh, estimates, they have been increasing. So uh, two years ago, nearly three million metric tons different in between those two agencies went up to five, and we currently currently have a eleven million metric ton difference between those wow. two estimates. Makes our hard life here a little bit harder, kind of, when we have to project <laughs> exports. For example. This, this is this is uh, wild to me. So before twenty twenty one, Conab and the USDA were generally very much in line with their estimates. Correct. Yep. And then the past two years, they've been higher. And then this year, it's holy crap, they're triple or they're double, more than double than what uh, last year was. I, I mean, any reason why? Or is it? <laughs> That's a very good question. I'm trying to, to figure out why. I'm not sure if uh, Conab uh, had had a um, change in their methodology. They're trying to uh, make things better in Brazil. They have different methods that you're combining or they're using. I don't know if that made uh the estimates uh from those two agencies to diverge uh but it's just a hypothesis i really don't have a good answer to mm. that question yet interesting Be yeah see how we do going forward if we can get that more in line in the coming years right <laughs> yeah yeah one thing i can tell you it just brings more volatility to the market because you don't <laughs> know which direction you're going to look at when you have those estimates right yeah absolutely absolutely yeah so the reason this is important, the production, is because, as I mentioned before, Brazil has become the largest exporter of corn uh, last year, 22-23. And um, if we look at the was the estimate, Brazil will still continue as the largest exporter. Um, we are second now, and we cannot forget that the blue line down there is coming up again. Argentina is coming back to the market uh, as we talked before, like Argentina, there is no reason for us just 
suspect that Argentina is not going to have a good crop for corn, both corn and beans this year. So there is more competition. Uh, if Brazil reduces uh, their exports, there's probably more Argentina coming to the market. Gotcha. And that and Brazil going from a 12% 12 export share in 21 to 31, 27%, right? Some of that's attributed to worse or better crops. But is the other one, I mean, how much of that is uh, a better partnership with China and China buying more exports from Brazil? Is that really what caused the shift or is it more de detailed than that? That's a very good question. So the reason Brazil became a good, a uh, big exporter, big player in the markets because they started uh, having more of the second crop in Brazil. I think there is a slide here I can show you how much uh, of uh, exports Brazil, uh, how much of the second crop Brazil produces related to the total production. But China has only become, it became a, 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 a destination for Brazil last year. China became, uh, had an agreement with Brazil that started from around in October, November last year, and they have increased their imports from Brazil significantly. So that changed from 23 to 31 percent. There's probably a bit of China there. And if Brazil keeps exporting more and more, it's probably China. Similar to what happened to us here in the U.S. Uh, some years ago, China came to the U.S. Now China is trying to diversify their portfolio. They're probably going to do something with Argentina as well, uh, depending on the politics and economics in Argentina in 23-24. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, here we go. Uh, Brazil, there we go. There's, corn production. Yeah, that's what I just said about the, the crops in Brazil. Brazil actually has three different crops. The third crop is very small, like less than 2%. You see that the first, the left-hand uh, uh, chart is like showing the first corn production in Brazil. is everywhere in Brazil. The second corn crop, however, is more concentrated in the central west part of Brazil. You probably have heard about Mato Grosso, Goiás, states. And they account mm -hmm. for most, more than half of the second corn production. And the second corn production, according to Conab, is going to account for nearly 78% of total production in Brazil. And this is the crop that Brazilian producers are about to start planting in, uh, in January, February, because they were late harvesting their beans. So they're going to harvest the beans. They're going to plant the second corn crop. Uh, the table on the top of the, the first crop uh, map there shows you that the first crop has of January 6th, 84% was planted and they already have less than 1% harvest. So this is crazy. Like they're plant, uh, uh, harvesting their corn. They haven't finished planting their first corn crop. <laughs> they're going to harvest their beans and they're going to plant the second corn crop. They're going to harvest the second corn crop uh, by May, sorry, June, July, uh, and that's most of the exports of Brazil come from uh, that second corn crop. Gotcha. And so, as far as planting second corn crop, you said it starts in January, but it, they really haven't planted that second corn crop yet. Is that what you're? That's correct. Saying? That's correct. They gotcha. usually start like by mid January. I would say some places maybe early January, but because they had a uh, late planting season for the beans. They're gonna we're gonna expect that they're gonna have a late uh, planting uh, uh, season for their second corn crop, which can be risky, for two reasons. In South of Brazil, not everywhere in South of Brazil they can plant the second corn crop because the southernmost state in Brazil, Rio Grande do Sul, they have they definitely don't plant the second corn crop because they have frost. Uh, it's not as cold as here in the U.S., but it's cold. In Paraná State, the northern northern state in the south of Brazil, they already plant the second corn crop, but they still have a risk of a frost. So if you keep moving north, the risk is not a frost, but a drought uh, starting in April. Uh, we don't have much rain in Brazil, in central west Brazil, after April, May. So they can have a problem if they plant and don't get as much rain, rain late in the season when the crop reaches a reproducing uh, stages. Uh, and that can be a problem for Brazil. The question now, are producers going to take the risk of uh, having a late start uh, for their second corn crop and take the risk of having bad weather uh, going forward this year? Still hard to answer. There'll be a lot of changes, in my opinion, for the second corn crop production in Brazil. But the trade estimate is over there. You know, That's the reason we have such a wide range for the second corn crop production in Brazil. Gotcha. Gotcha. Going forward here, so like 
right now, what we can do is like try to simulate things, try to uh, solve some exercises that you guys, brokers here with API, ask us to do. And here is a simulation that I ran here, assuming a Brazilian production of uh, 123.4 million metric tons. Just comparing here, the WASD uh, for December was 129. And currently, Conab decreased their number for 117.6 million metric tons. So if we have that, Brazil, of course, is going to export less corn. And we may have a window of opportunity here for us in US to export maybe 81 to 143 million bushels more corn this year if this problem in Brazil is confirmed. And if this is confirmed, Brazil usually, as I said before, exports the corn crop after they harvest the second, uh, they, they export the corn after they harvest the second corn crop by July. Uh, that's when you can start seeing Brazil reducing their uh, exports. I think the next slide actually shows us uh, a pattern for Brazilian uh, uh, corn, uh, corn exports. Start of the year, the market year for Brazil uh, in Argentina, according to the WASD, uh, the, the USDA starts in March, goes through February. You're going to see in the beginning, that's when they are harvesting the first corn crop in Brazil. They use domestically that uh, first corn crop, and they're going to start exporting more beans, not more corn, sorry, in, in July. The peak is in August, September, probably September uh, this year because they're going to have a uh, late harvest if uh, this is confirmed. But that's when you can expect exports to reduce uh, from gotcha. Brazil and give us some window of, uh, of opportunities here in the U.S. So window of opportunity you're thinking could be that summer time frame, uh, June, maybe Ju would you say July in yeah. the end of July into yep. later? Yeah. To say like starting in July, of course you can have more exports before that. Brazil is not uh, exporting much. You can see there traditionally they don't, they can't add all those numbers there. I don't think there are 3 million metric tons of exports from Brazil between March and June. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Assuming that you're going to have a, a late uh, harvest, probably in August, late July, August. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. We'll see if that, yeah, hopefully that's an opportunity for the U.S. farmer maybe to fill that gap, correct? Yes. Yes. So, so soybeans. Yeah. The same thing for beans. Yeah, I decided to keep a, a higher production estimate here. Probably my guess for the WASD tomorrow, 157. And I have a final estimate, currently final estimate for Brazil production, 153.4. I don't believe con, uh, the USDA is going to go that low, but I didn't expect the CONAB to go as low as they did yesterday. They were 155 something coming from 160. It was a big cut in my opinion. But again, if Brazil doesn't produce as much beans this year, they're going to export less. CONAB also cut, I think, by three million metric tons, if I'm, not, if I'm not wrong, they are uh, export estimate for a different uh, market year. This is uh, October, September for Brazil. So we, again, we can have a window of opportunities here uh, to export 60 to 100 million bushels more if you have a lower crop in Brazil. And again, I have a, a lower bias for both corn and beans going forward for production in Brazil. Gotcha. gotcha. And... Uh, yeah, at last there, I think I have a chart, I think, trying to answer a um, question that you had yesterday for me, yes. for my team, for me, Larry, Brian. <laughs> uh, so, and, hard and to the, see, I think. But. The question, I'll, I'll just repeat the question. The question we got on the live show was, um, Suez Canal closing, is that going to affect U.S. exports more or South American exports more? And so, yeah, go ahead. No, that's great. Uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, be easy to say this i got this chart with a band from our team yesterday this is uh, from icon from writers showing the flow of vessels yesterday as of yesterday for corn and beans all over the world of course brazil is exporting a lot now uh, argentina should be exporting a little bit more uh, than they are but you're going to see that there are lots of green dots those are all vessels they are going from brazil to asia through the southern of africa so this is the main route for Brazilian production. You're going to see some of those vessels going to Europe. They're going to stay in Europe. Brazil exports a lot uh, of corn and beans to Europe also. But I don't think a problem with the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal are going to affect uh, much of Brazil exports. But they can actually 
cause some uh, problems for our exports here because it's the closest route for our exports when they were, we're exporting from the east, east coast, right? Uh, we can either go through the Panama Canal, which is not a good option right now, right. and stay in line for a long, long time, or take the risk to go to the Suez Canal. So going to probably right. affect us more here in the U.S. than South America. Right. And my gosh, 2023, and it's looking like 2024, it might be the year if we have the shipping issues, right? If we go back three months, we had the low miss, uh, river levels in the Mississippi, the Correct. Panama Canal is back up, the Suez Canal. <laughs> Logistic gonna, is going to be a big Logistics issue is year. a yep. killer, yeah, yep. absolutely. So uh, hopefully we'll see, uh, maybe we can do the PMW. Uh, that's the great thing about the United States. We have a lot of... Uh, different ways to ship grain. So maybe we'll see that P and W become uh, more of a hot topic going forward, but yep. time will tell right. there. Yep. So um, I think that's all we have. Correct. Cesar. So yeah, that's all we um, have for today. Be happy awesome. to come back here anytime and talk to you guys again. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see what report says tomorrow and hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.